Hello everyone. My name is Sapna Parik and we are group 9. We are working on stock market prediction. So these are my team members. They are Aaron, Neil, Atvik and Suhan. So the topics that we will cover in our upcoming slides are introduction, motivation, problem, known challenges, key existing approaches, our approach, method, result and observation, conclusion and future work. So here is the brief introduction of our project. We are using huge stock market data set that we have taken from Kegel.com as well as Cebu Volatility Index to increase the number of features and hopefully improve our results. So our research indicate that we will be using LSTM system that was most widely adopted tool for stock market prediction. So the problem statement for our uh, project is that uh, stock, uh, the stock and financial market tend to be unpredictable and even illogical. So uh, if we see like last U.S. elections uh, that that can have a dramatic effects on a, on a, on the markets. So due to these characteristics, financial data can have a rather turbulent structure, which often makes it hard to find reliable patterns. So uh, the aim of this project is to build a tool that can find these patterns for us. So this will be done through a combination of data manipulation and an LSTM prediction model. Hello, this is Satvik. Uh, I'll be continuing the presentation um, after Sapna. Um, so coming to the motivation, uh, the the main motivation for our project was to uh, have a model uh, which could predict the values of the stock in advance by analyzing the trend over the last few years. Um, having uh, such a model uh, could help us maximize the profit and also might be minimize the losses. Um, due to the volatile and non-linear nature of the financial stock markets, uh, accurate prediction of stock market uh, is a very challenging is a very challenging task. A uh, few of the uh, known challenges today are uh, one we we don't have we don't have enough data. Um, and usually the data provided would be uh, opening, low, high, and the closing values of the stock. Um, but um, there are uh, a lot of other metrics which can be used uh, to generate further useful data for our models. Um, the second issue being scaling. Uh, so. If we let's say if we have a stock uh, which is worth ten dollars uh, and another stock which is worth a hundred, um, then the model, uh, then if if we train the model uh, for a for a, if we train the model to see a one dollar change, then uh, if we consider that one dollar change, uh, it would be ten percent jump um, for the stock which is ten dollars, but it would just be a one percent change for a stock which is hundred dollars. So we need to uh, we need to consider this, and we need to scale all of our inputs uh, for our model. Uh, the the third challenge is uh, the time frames uh, because we cannot use data which is too old for our model. Um, there are a lot of uh, approaches in which uh, people are dealing with uh, the stock price prediction, um, but a few of the key approaches which are related to our project are as follows. Um, the first one being a DING, um, in which we have a LSTM uh, with multiple feature inputs. And then this model has demonstrated a prediction accuracy of over 95%. Um, the second one being Lee, uh, which has demonstrated the importance of moving windows uh, as they help uh, denoise the system. The third one uh, being GIA, uh, which explored the effectiveness of uh, the LSTM system when trained by back propagation. And, uh, and this has a pretty good impressive uh, prediction of uh, the root mean square error of uh, 0 0.02 uh, for predicting the market um, stock prices. So uh, just like any other machine learning project, 
the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get the data in like a workable shape. So the data that we got from Kegel, uh, we had like four, four, five, five features called open, high, low, close, and volume data. So, uh, so we chose close price as a target for our experiments, but we could also have chosen any other feature that is uh, that you can see in the screen right now. Yeah. So, so when when we're dealing with a lot of neural network neural network projects, it's very important that we scale the data. So for that reason, and also it, um, our research suggested that min-max scalar work best with uh, LSTM models. So we used a min-max scalar with range from zero to one. So uh, we we were working with a PFP stock that had around twelve thousand or uh, twelve thousand rows. We broke them. We broke the entire data set into training of sixty percent, twenty percent validation, and twenty percent testing. So they were roughly around seven thousand two hundred samples in a testing data set. Initially, we started with one feature to build the skeleton of the system. Yeah, our literature survey recommended that a moving window was very important for LSTM, LSTM system, especially for this kind of stock time series data. Having moving window provides more granularity to the predictions. Initially, we started off with a window size of 60. The function on the left uh, that you can see on the screen worked down the data into windowed segments with 60 time, step, time steps in each window. The function prep data is applied to get the variables x and y train, x and y valid, and x and y test. <clears throat> the variables x and y train had a shape of 7140 into 60 cross 1. Following the KLS documentation and some examples online, we started off with a simple LSTM model structure with just two layers. So dealing with any neural network problem or any machine learning problem, we need an optimizer so that we can find the global minimum. Uh, in our case, Adam, optimize, Adam Optimizer was the primary optimi optimizer that was found to be performing well with our model. So also the loss function that was chosen here was mean squared error, which was generally what is used for all the regression problems. However, the mean squared error only looks at the difference from the predicted price to the actual price. We would suggest that any other loss function that could just predict if the price went up or down would give us a better value in prediction than just focusing on <coughs> predicting individual values. Using the fit callback function, we created a checkpoint function that would save the best weights. Hello, this is Aaron Etheridge. Um, so our initial model um, didn't actually perform all that bad. It had a um, MSC loss of like approximately one. So it was about $1 off of the, the predicted price. But um, for our test evaluations uh, uh, on the test data, um, we were getting like above $3 off for our, our predictions. Um, you can see that in the, the top figure. Um, and as the graph shows on the right, um, we were consistently under predicting the, the value uh, with our initial model. So the main object of this project was to be able to predict the price. Um, so in order to do that, we had to pass one window to our function, um, which returned one uh, next day predicted value. Uh, when we did this, we passed in the data leading up to um, the end of the year and then calculated $32 uh, for the first day after the end of the year, so the 2nd of January, but the actual price was $37, so we were pretty off. So these next couple slides are how we improved our model. The first thing we did was um, increase the epoch size, and this alone brought our, our error down quite significantly. Um, and then the next obvious thing to do was add more LSTM layers. Um, we did some fine tuning between one and three extra layers and found that two more layers on top of the original layer was, was the best average. So um, during our research um, and looking on some examples online, uh, we saw that a lot of people were adding 
dropout layers to their LSTM models. Um, so we tried doing this as well. Um, we tried different values of like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, um, and so on. Um, but all these values actually seem to hurt our uh, prediction quite badly. Um, so we removed them um, in, in our single input feature here. Um, and then uh, we tried to add a, or create a new um, loss function. So um, the MSC loss function is only looking at like how off the prediction is from like the actual price. It doesn't really care if it's like above or below the actual price. Whereas when you're doing stock market prediction, you probably want something that's just telling you whether, oh, the stock's gonna go up tomorrow or, oh, it's gonna go down. Um, and we tried to implement this, but um, we were running into some Keras um, package issues and, and uh, we weren't able to get a working model that, that would accept our, our data um, and produce like a, a usable like loss function. Um, we kept getting weird errors where our loss function would be in the hundreds of billions or trillions and it would never come down. So we had to revert back to just the MSE loss function. Um, so the next obvious improvement we could have made to our model was adding more features. Um, so we started with like the just the close feature, like the closing price feature of the stock as our input um, to predict the next day. And then we um, we added, we tried the, the volume, the um, like high for the day, the low for the day, um, all the different features that were like available to us and just the, the initial huge stock market data set. Um, volume seemed to be the best performing one. Uh, along with closing. So we, we kept closing and volume um, together and we came up with these results um, after training our model, which uh, wasn't as good as just our single um, feature, but we figured there was probably room for improvement. So we continued on from here. Um, the next thing we did was we tried to integrate um, like a more robust financial indicator. So we went to the um, SIBO volatility index, which is like an index that tracks like a particular stocks or like the entire market's volatility for that particular day, like how much trading was going on, how much mass selling was going on. Those kind of factors are all factored into this, this one number called the, the SIBO volatility index. Um, the only problem with this was that um, the index didn't start until like 2004 and our original data uh, had data all the way from like 1972 up till current day. Um, so this significantly cut our, our data rows down to uh, only just above like 4,000 rows. Um, but we were hopeful that maybe having those extra features with a more robust um, indicator might might help our, our training. Uh, but uh, even though um, we had more features, the, the, the drop in data um, was just too harsh. Um, the initial training was uh, like 16 off and on our test, values we were two hundred and nine dollars off so that was really bad like we were we were hundreds of percent off of the actual price um, uh, we tried increasing the the epochs and messing with the window size um, because we we're working with different a different size data um, and we were able to bring down the training um, predictions to like 0.22 which is uh, almost the best we had seen so far. But once we applied this model to our test data, um, it was still like way worse, um, way worse off than, than the uh, earlier models. So our, um, even with our more, most performant model, um, one where we had a 
t train accuracy of uh, 0.18 and a test accuracy of 0.37, um, we still weren't accurately able to get like a good um, stock prediction. Um, we applied our <laughs> prediction technique um, to get like the next day's uh, value. Um, and we predicted 37. Um, 0.69, which was significantly closer to the actual 37, um, as opposed to like our 32 that our original model had. Um, but the problem was we were still like either always over predicting or always under um, predicting a model. Um, as in like the, the prediction line was always either above like the actual or always below. So it wasn't really useful to to actually making real like stock predictions. In our time with LSTNs um, and using them for stock market prediction, we weren't able to reliably predict the next day's price. Um, we think this is because there are just like an overwhelming number of variables that play a factor um, uh, in predicting like a price um, or that can have an effect on a stock's price. So trying to factor all of these things into like one system um, it gets impossibly like overwhelming. Um, and this goes against like what we originally thought um, as a team um, where we thought like a pretty simple model could at least like help you predict to some accuracy even if it was like 70 um, like 60% better um, than just like guessing, but um, through our time, we weren't able to produce anything that was ev any better than just like a coin flip of whether a stock was gonna go up or down um, in the next day. Um, for future work, uh, as we mentioned before, um, we would like to get a, a loss function um, that uh, worked properly um, because the mean squared error um, loss function just doesn't quite do or look at what you want from like a stock market predictor, which is like what direction the price is moving, like whether it's going up or down, it just kind of looks at like, oh, this is gonna be the stock tomorrow or, oh, this is gonna be um, the, uh, like it's gonna like shoot up exponentially tomorrow or shoot down exponentially tomorrow or, or, or something like that. Um, so building a better loss function is definitely um, something that, that could be done for future work. Um, and as we did more research uh, during, throughout this lab, um, we um, found that like the current state of the art is to use like web scraping bots that um, scrape like social media platforms for like how popular um, a particular like stock or, or ETF is on that day and then plugging that as like an in input into like an LSTM system. Um, but something like that is, is um, quite complex and, and way over any of our um, heads to be able to implement in a, in a class like this, but that is definitely something that you could do as like an expansion to the system, um, just to get like a more up-to-date, like relative um, like input to a system. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on uh, CampusWire. Um, We'd be more than willing to answer anything you got there. Um, just make sure you tag one of us in the question and we'll try to get back to you. Uh, thank you. This is everything from the stock market uh, prediction group um, for the applied machine learning class. Thank you. Have a fun summer. <laughs>